Hey everyone, Sean Vicentiner here from the Silver Bow Fly Shop in Spokane, Washington. In today's lake fishing techniques video, we're going to discuss coronamid fishing. In the first segment, we'll talk about gear and what to use. In the second section, we're going to talk about what to look for when coronamid fishing. And then in the last uh, segment, we're going to talk about how to actually fish coronamids. Stay tuned and we'll get going in just a minute. For our first segment in coronamid lake fishing, let's take a look at our gear. The rods that you want to use are 9 to, 10, 9 to 10 foot rods on average with a nice soft tip action. I'd say 5 or 6 weight is a good starting point. I typically don't go lighter than that because we've got to have the ability to turn over strike indicators, maybe some split shot and sometimes two flies. In addition to that rod you want a good weight forward floating line. I typically like a nymph indicator taper for turning over all those um, flies and indicators. and on top of that line you want a good 9 to 12 foot leader that's a good starting point in the springtime in the summertime you may want to go upwards of 20 foot in leader or longer when the fish are down deep it's not fun to cast but it's necessary if you want to catch fish so you can always add tippet on top of these 9 to 12 foot leaders and make them longer now in addition to the leader you need a little assortment of split shot for getting your flies to hang straight down and then most importantly is the strike indicator itself. This particular strike indicator that we like to use is called a quick release strike indicator. It's easy to adjust the depth of the nymph and then when you're fishing really deep you want to be able to bring your leader inside the rod tip. This indicator will actually slide down once you got a fish hooked up allowing you to bring your leader inside the rod tip. So let's take a look at our chronomid fly selection. Chronomids are actually pretty basic flies, so they don't have to be anything elaborate and actually sometimes simpler the better. But I want to have an assortment of different color bodies with different colors, thread wire, ribs, and also different beads. Sometimes one works better than others. Real common colors are white beads, um, silver beads and black beads. Sometimes gold works as well, but have a nice little assortment. Um, kind of like this selection here you can see on the top row. Blacks, olives, reds, um, brown and purple can also be used around the eastern Washington region. And then also throw in some bionic worms or uh, blood worms in particular like San Juan's. Those also work really well. And then also have a couple chronomid emergers and dries for the evening times when the fish are up on the surface. For a second segment, let's talk about what type of water to fish when chronomid fishing in lakes. Generally in the springtime, you're looking to fish the bays and shoreline areas in 15 feet or less of water. We generally want a muddy bottom. As the hatch progresses, then you might be looking for weedy areas. Now in the summertime, fish move out into deeper water. So generally then we're going to fish more out in the open with deeper, longer leaders. All right, a real popular chronomid technique is actually using a strike indicator and a floating line. In this situation, you want to suspend your chronomid about one foot off the bottom. That's a good starting point. As a chronomid hatch progresses, then you move your fly shallower and shallower as the fish cruise closer to the surface. In this situation, we're just off the end of a dock here, so I'm going to take my forceps and I'm going to clamp them to the end of the fly, and then we're going to move over to the edge of the dock and actually drop the fly straight off the edge and see just how deep the water is and then adjust our strike indicator accordingly. So let's, we got our fly clamped on there. So let's drop these straight down. I'm going to let that fly sink all the way to the bottom and when my leader goes slack, then we know we've reached the bottom. So we kind of know where it's at. There we go. And from that point, I'm actually going to move my, my indicator I marked that with my hand, so now I'm going to pull up another foot or so of line, adjust my indicator, obviously pull off your forceps, and then start fishing. That's a good starting point when using indicators and chronomids. All right, now that we've got our fly in chronomid depth set, let's go ahead and take a look at that retrieval rate. So I'm going to cast my fly out, and the first thing to do is to let that fly hang straight below the indicator. So give it a few seconds to drop. I got a little piece of split shot on to help. But then let's look at two different types of retrieval rates. The first one is just a slow hand twist retrieve, which it could also be just little one to two inch strips. And then the other one is long slow strips. 
So the name of the game here, if you haven't caught on already, is slow, which this can sound a little tedious and painful, but when crawman fishing is pretty hot, you'll forget all about that. Now, if the retrieval rate, if that nice slow retrieval rate isn't working for you, something else is wrong. So you need to either change the depth of your fly, move it shallower, move it deeper, or change your fly, and hopefully that should get you some results. Crumb of fishing is pretty good today. We got another fish hooked up. So that, that's going to wrap up our episode on crawman fishing on lakes. I'm going to go ahead and get this guy released, but make sure to check out our website and other YouTube videos at silverbowflyshop.com or our YouTube channel. And uh, we'll see you on the lake or at the shop. Thanks, guys.